Next important thing in anatomy is we have to keep in mind. Let's see, have a look at this one. So, we know this is the lid and the different parts of conjunctiva is being shown. What is important? The, what is bulbar conjunctiva? Again, we are repeating this is the fornix and this is the palpebral. The color coding is in front of you. And of course, this is just the surface of the cornea which is being shown here, right? And then we talk about the in the fornix, what we have are accessory lacrimal glands. The main lacrimal gland everybody knows is on the outer upper quadrant. So, in the phonics area, we have accessory lacrimal glands. What are the names? Glands of cross, glands of Wolfring. Okay, we will remember that. And in the lids, of course, there is meibomian gland. Okay, what next in anatomy? We have to know, okay, this we have mentioned. We have to know that how many phonuses are there. So, do not say only upper and lower. We have four phonuses, okay. Superior, okay, then we have lateral and medial as well, apart from superior and inferior. Now, what is very, very important and we can note it down here is that superior is phonix is most deepest of all, okay. So, this is the deepest of all. Sometimes what happens due to disinsertion of the levator palpebral superioris in old age, when there is disinsertion of LPS, okay. I hope you are noting down. What happens? You get a very voluminous. So, we have to learn some clinical applications along with anatomy, right? So, you get a very voluminous phonics. Superior phonics becomes very voluminous. And we are talking about superior phonics. And this is what is called giant phonics syndrome, okay? So, giant phonics syndrome is something like this as you have, you have a look here. So, this occurs in old age. And what is the main problem? Common sense the foreign body can get lodged inside this and can trouble the patient, right? Okay, so the foreign body gets trapped here. Right, so what next? We next talk about palpebral conjunctiva. We already know palpebral conjunctiva means part of the conjunctiva under the lid. Now, let us talk about the different parts of palpebral. First, we are making this diagram in my style to make it simple. If this is the tarsal plate, right, and this is your lid margin. So, this I make, show you the whole lid like this. Conjunct palpebral is under the lids. So, the part which is covering the margin of the lid becomes your marginal, okay, part of the palpebral conjunctiva. Whereas, this becomes over the tarsal, tarsal part. And just behind the tarsal, the part of the conjunctiva is called orbital part. So, there are three parts of the palpebral conjunctiva that you have to know. And fourth, very important, where the marginal and tarsal, this junction, here there is a little sulcus out here, okay. And this sulcus is what is called sulcus subtarsalis. Do you understand? Think about your lid. So, if this is the margin, just where the it is starting, the tarsal part is starting, there is a little bit of groove. That groove is what we are calling circus subtarsalis. Right? Again, we have to remember this that mainly sub foreign body can get impacted over there. Okay? And sometimes we may need. Of course, we have to evert the lid to remove that foreign body, but apart from that, if the, you need double eversion of lid, it may not be possible clinically with your hand. In that case, what do we use? This is important and you should know we go for Desmarais retractor, okay, for double eversion of lid, okay. So, here we are, a quick revision again, what I just, whatever we have drawn, it's written here that palpebral has marginal, tarsal, orbital and sulcus subtarsalis is the area which I just explained it to you, right? Okay. Again, you can see the same parts of the conjunctiva palpebral here in the diagram. 